Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Miles Edgeworth Trials and Tribulations, everybody. Yeah. So, we're going to court today, and thus far, the only thing that Marty, like, is pretty sure of is that Larry somehow accidentally set the bridge on fire. Yes! And that D Dahlia, aka Iris, got partial amnesia in the past, so she doesn't remember that she went to college with Phoenix, but she remembers Phoenix. Well, sometimes where it's like, I remember this person, but, like, I don't remember these other things... And, like, <laughs> you, you know, like, yeah. where it's, like, I remember I, I, faces and I remember, like, people, but I don't remember all the events surrounding things, which... It was that can six happen. years... No, five years ago. Like That's I said, it, it might have been a forced amnesia where people were like, she's terrible, we need her to just kind of, like, go to a path of redemptiveness. Okay. <laughs> and then... Oh, and here's a theory. Oh. What if what if Larry's like, okay, need a big romantic gesture for Iris. I know, I'll set the bridge on fire. <laughs> Iris, my love for you burns <laughs> like that bridge. Yeah, that could totally be it. No, you know what I was just realizing? This is like, y you saw Fantastic Beasts 1, right? Yeah. Where the lady was like, has the part of, takes the part out of the brain. Oh, yeah. And then she's weird. like, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> like, where that part like, was the really weird chair and the, yeah but that like it kind of puts everyone at peace at ease hmm. it could be not like that it's exactly like that oh the but... other thing that marty is predicting and this was off screen oh, she's, yeah. she's like what if like the something incredible larry saw was iris flying like the circus guy <laughs> oh yeah like i thought she would be like hovering above the bridge that was like yesterday though when we were talking about that <laughs> yeah I forgot about that anyhow well, there's the people. February 9th, 9.47 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number one. We're number one, because we're Edgeworth. Oh my, Mr. Loris feels that way about me? Apparently, he isn't aware of your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed! I thought she was happy! I'm sorry! She was, she was happy. Oh, okay. She was blushing. Oh! She wasn't like... <clears throat> I, I thought she was like, good, nobody knows my secret. <laughs> That's good. Partially that and embarrassed that he has a crush on her. Probably. I'm sorry. I just hardly am accustomed to that sort of thing. Worry not. And in any case, whatever it was that he saw on the night of the incident, mark my words, I will drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Larice is the witness today? No. I believe that none will be the first oh, cool. to take the stand. Great. Sister Bikini. She claims to have seen the very instant in which you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Donum, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. She's just like... <laughs> I wonder if it's like she's doing the Matt on guard thing where she can, um, like, no, it's not me, and, like, no, no psych locks it's... appear. Or if it's like, no, that wasn't me because I didn't have control of myself and my body. Or oh, something. like loophole abuse. Like loophole abuse. Or she has the purple magatama that negates Psychox. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. She like pushes like a button on it or something. It's, it's like, like now no. I'm guarded. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You're a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed. Don't worry. I've taken the necessary steps. Is he wearing a disguise? Is he gonna come in and be like, I'm prosecutor, uh, fluffy, <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's got, like, a beard and a mustache and, like, a wig. <laughs> he's, he basically has the weird, like, mustache glasses on. Yeah. But, no, like, he, no, nothing else has changed. He's just wearing, well, Edgeworth would never wear something so that ridiculous. <laughs> yep. You have? Iris, it is a prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now, I am a defense attorney. A you have to believe in people. <laughs> yep. yep. A defense attorney's job is to believe in people, and to believe until the bitter end. That's what a friend of mine told me once. Yep. Mr. Edgeworth? You may pass judgment on me from the defendant's chair. You are the one to decide whether or not I'm able to do the task that I've been entrusted. Wait, so she could just be like, you're not doing a good job, and just throw him out of the room? She could throw Edgeworth out of the room, but then she'd have to represent herself. Oh. Okay. 
Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Okay, well, here we go. February 9th, 10 a.m., District Come Court, on, prosecutor, court room number be? seven. No, we don't know. <laughs> they just don't it's a show midget. up. <laughs> they just don't show up. It's like, well, looks like you win. <laughs> or is it like jury duty? Where if, like, the other attorney doesn't show up, then it's just like, well, that's what happens. Well, that's that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hatsakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, he looks normal. The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. <laughs> Edgeworth's like, I didn't get a double prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> we win by default! <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. If it's Winston Payne. <laughs> it would seem this case it was over already before it had a chance to even begin. I'm ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant... Yeah! Yeah! Yes, yes, yes! Yes! I'm so happy! <laughs> the prosecution stands ready. Uh, and you are... Franziska Von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. V von Karma, you say? Perchance you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred Von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I'm a Von Karma, that is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. So yes, he literally was like, I know you're in Germany, but Get can you fly all the way here? <laughs> Wow. This is so great! <laughs> also, you were screaming so loud we didn't get to hear her. Objection! Oh, sorry. <laughs> that, you just gotta hear me. It's I'm fine. gonna have to crank up the game body. <laughs> Objection! Or you can mute ours for two seconds. <laughs> I don't want to spoil your reaction, though. That's fine. Y you did? Then you must be a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yep, this made this case better. Yes, Your Honor. I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? Well, he knows your name. You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are, are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have any, anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. There... there isn't? But I'm sure once before in this courtroom... Back! I told you, there is no such weakling. What? What is that? A whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. The bailiff, remove that whip at. I have no objection to the whip. <laughs> <laughs> y you don't. The prosecution can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee, but there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to it prove seems today. Seems so weird <laughs> to see his mirrored image self. <laughs> Indeed. <It's weird. laughs> This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you slip through my fingers. I didn't yeah. take a good breath. That's I right. needed to breathe. <laughs> I see you brought your flair for the histro histrionic. So you know why she's doing this and why she's not giving us away. Because in the second game, she was, like, constantly, like, feeling inferior to Edgeworth and that, like, he always thought he was better. And she's like, this is my chance to prove Ooh, I'm better, better than him! <laughs> Allow me to add it to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in this court. The wah! The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Donum. Her body was found in Hazakura Temple Courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. Crime photo added to the court record. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. 
My first and my last trial as a defense attorney. This is so great. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she was short. <laughs> okay. Witness, state your name and occupation, please. Hold on here! I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. Witness, please stand up nice and straight. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for witnesses with bad backs. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Yeah, she's pretty short. Yeah. Once again, your name and occupation, please. Little old me, well, I'm the head nun of Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini! Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Blah! The courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with lechery? Lechery. Lechery. Okay. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. Y you want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm a sight to behold in the summer. Not in the good way. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, actually, she's like super like, <laughs> she's like super slender underneath super it. She's slender. just like, she just wears like oh really baggy gosh. clothes. <laughs> <laughs> she's just short. Yeah. In any case, witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? <laughs> 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 and that's not a typo. <laughs> oh, really? That's the... If you are Canadian, that's generally how you pronounce about a boot. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> how I Met Your Mother helped me with that. <laughs> Good job, How I Met Your Mother. Oh, this makes the case so much better with The Francisca. case is already great. No, but I was like, well, I'm not going to get to talk much during the, the courtroom. I think that's part of why I liked the second game. Yeah. Because I got to talk way more. Because it's like, I mean, the se let's be fair. The second case, it was full of females. So, of course, yeah. I was talking. But, like, even during cases where I'm like, eh, I get, there's some guys, there's some girls, like... The circus case. The circus case, that one in particular, there was a lot of guys. Like, well, there's Maya, and Francisca, and Regina. And Regina. And that's and it. And that's it. But it's like, Francisca talks a lot, so... <laughs> yeah, she does. So The good. night of the murder. That night, I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple. But, well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte and return to the Hazakura Temple. There's no bath in the Inner Temple, you see, and I needed a long, hot soak. Let's make that, uh, fixed, by the way. As soon as the bridge comes back in, we're gonna renovate the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> it was at, after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it! Saw what? You literally didn't tell us anything about Iris stabbing the guy. No. Hmm. So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself heading to Hazakura Temple? Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the inner temple. That sounds... Maybe, maybe she was the one who did it and she's just like, Oh, oh, my back! Oh! And then, like, That's goes poss back. And she's just <laughs> That's like, possible. <laughs> and she's like, oh! And then, like, faints. I mean, let's be fair. She was the only one at the crime scene. And then she immediately chased us away to go to the police. That's true. So, Very true. it could be. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with the testimony that I can see. And you are not about to fall at the first hurdle now, are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth, please begin your cross-examination. I wonder if they have, like... Because, obviously, her father was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna train Edgeworth. So yes. it's like, be <laughs> basically, like, Edgeworth and um, Von Karma were like Quasimodo and Frodo. Where it's like, I would Frodo? Teach not Frodo, Fro Frollo. <laughs> I was like Frodo, Fro Froyo, Frollo. Um, no, but kind of like that, where it's like, oh, like this, per like this thing is terrible, but I will teach it to think like me. And then I wonder if like Edgeworth. <laughs> Repeat after me, Edgeworth. You are to fall. <laughs> you are ugly. <laughs> As if he failed the lesson. No, but I'm wondering if, like, he and Francisca, because, like, clearly... They were raised as siblings, kind of. Kind of raised as siblings. Yeah. That's hilarious. I'm trying, like, I'm trying to imagine, like, childhood photos of, like, them, like, fighting or something. <laughs> well, that night, she was helping an acolyte. Yeah, that, Hold whatever. it. 
What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? Where will be the ones asking you the questions, madam? In order to do that, a place... A place strong in the spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It's all quite exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor watching to make sure if spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple where the murder took place? Oh, my back! Oh, oh my back! <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Violently? That's right. It's no laughing matter, especially in the winter. Oh, we were just laughing about it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. How do you live? Is it like, oh, I guess I can't brush my teeth because- This is why she has Iris. <laughs> I, uh, Iris, come back in here and help me brush my teeth! <laughs> uh, like, that's why she murders. Well, since when is a toothbrush heavier no, than toothpaste. a fork and knife? Since when is toothpaste heavier than a fork toothpaste and knife? Toothpaste is heavier than a fork and knife. It's got, like, more girth. A fork is like- She just uses the travel toothpaste sizes. They're really small. <laughs> <laughs> Iris, I need you to go back into town so you can get me more travel sized toothpaste. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just be the live. It's like a strict training. <laughs> On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right. Raging like a bull in the big. In the, I almost said the big pen. <laughs> in the big pen. In the pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless it warmed up, it was going to finally finish me off. Well, so she left Iris, Iris. and returned to Hazakura <gasps> Temple. Which was dumb, but... You left Iris to help? With what? What do you think? The Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10pm, so we were starting to enter the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain with the Disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the Acolytes so that they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the Inner Temple, correct? Yes, yes. She's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. Maybe Bikini was like, Alright, we're gonna do a double death plan thing. Double death? Double death, where she's, like, she... They, maybe they were in cahoots. Oh. Because, let's be And fair. now Bikini's just like, Nope, Iris, you're the one who's going down. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, and, like... There's the whole, uh, again, maybe it's like one person wanted the jewel, one person wanted like whatever else, and then, um, yeah. And maybe that would explain why Iris is like, no, I didn't kill her. Because I wasn't the one who killed her, it was her. But maybe like, she assisted oh. the killing process, or like, made sure that Maya was by herself. Or maybe she's the one who helped, maybe she did meet Larry and they like, set fire to the bridge together. together. We he's like, do I, it together. And the movie's like, I saw the most incredible thing, and then like, <laughs> it's like them setting the bridge on fire. Although she apparently didn't leave, so I yeah. don't know why. Maybe she. Maybe she went to Camino, cloned no, herself. Maybe Iris was the one who pushed her out the window, and then Bikini at the bottom was just like, "Hoo <laughs> Just it's a Toy Story. Me push Buzz out the window. window. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Needed a long hot soak. So you return to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath? My back is to blame for everything. It's a do or be done in kind of world after all. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are! I know what's on your mind! I bet your next question's going to be, where exactly did you wash? Ah, oh, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? I was- ah! Pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. Is there some sort of <laughs> kick me sign stuck to the defense's bench? <laughs> anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so? To be fair, we don't know where the ba bathing rooms are in on the map. True. Well, but l let's look at the map real quick, because I'm actually curious about this, because this could be important. 
Okay, so Hasakura Temple. Oh, it doesn't really show much. Of yeah, I know. Okay, I thought it showed at least a little bit. There, we don't have Let's floor assume, plans. So what we can remember, you walk in, it's like Grand Arch. There's the main hall, and then there's some rooms off to the side, and there's bathrooms far away. Because, um... Oh, yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix is like, was walking a ways to get to the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe it's a terrible bathroom situation. But maybe, it depends on if the bathroom is connected to the bathing area because that's like mm -hmm. it's completely different in japan which this game is made in japan where <laughs> this game takes place in america <laughs> no but like when they made it yeah normally they'll have a separate room for just like the toilet and then the other room will have the shower and bathing area and the all the floors supposed to get wet mm. It's like, it's great. But, um, yeah. So anyway. if it's like, but if it's like that, it could be it's separate from that area. So it might be like a long ways to walk. It could take a while. I don't know. Right. The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, okay. You have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words... It was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. Hmm, that certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Okay. Also, I just want to point out, Francisca had zero prep time. She flew in, got off the plane, like, took an Uber over here, and then burst through the courtroom door. It's like, oh, yeah, she, yeah. she has no evidence of the case. She's just oh, like, yeah. I kind of hurt. Edgeworth ta told me on the phone a little bit about it. Sure. But oh well. If that, like, who knows? He oh, she, was on, she was on one of those flights with internet, and she's just, like, emailing Godot. Like, hey, Godot, you are going to be the, like, prosecutor. It's, oh, sure, baby. <laughs> You're gonna go and check out everything for me. She and stopped by Godot's back. house before coming. He gave her some coffee and, like, all the evidence. Like, yeah. here. <laughs> you need some coffee. You have some, like... She's also jet-lagged. Yeah! Like, completely. Wow. <laughs> go, Francisca. Okay. Her back she backs does up her job violently. Well. Left Iris, Iris. And returned to Hazakura Temple. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. No There's bath. There's no bath, and I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. So there's, like, the winding hallway. Yeah. But is that an outdoor hallway? Indoor, I think. Oh. But she fainted outside. Oh. Yeah, you're right, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So is it like she saw it from there, and then she ran out, and she was like, Ah! Like, a second that could time? That be it, yeah. That'd be weird. Well, oh, man. This is the first time that I'm, like, not sure on the very first one. And I'm probably- it's probably just like, duh. I had trouble with this testimony my first time as well. Okay, okay. And it was something where I'm like, that wouldn't work. Because I know exactly what Francisco would say if we tried to make that work. Okay. But well, we let's look anyways. at the evidence. Oh, okay. oh, is it the weather? Is it the fact that there's a crazy thunderstorm and it's like, why would you run through a thunderstorm? No. Or with the snow? No. It isn't. Okay. Um, because that would be a legitimate reason. The Occult. The Occult New Year's Edition. <laughs> Look at that. I just realized we've never seen her real hair. She's never taken off her hood. Bikini? Yeah. Maybe when she, like breaks down, she'll take off her hood in like, the most, like a mohawk. in the most rebellious way and be like Wah! <laughs> That'd be funny. That would be like something that would happen in one of the newer games where the breakdowns get more crazy. <laughs> the breakdown the breakdown is like somebody starts breakdancing on the ground. The breakdown breakdance. <laughs> and they're just like rolling around on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I that would not be out of place in a new game. I would love to see that actually. Alright, the crime photo. Uh -huh. At least his autopsy, autopsy report. report. Is it because of the timing? Actually, we don't know the timing, do we? We haven't heard anything in her testimony about time at all. <sighs> Is that the problem then? She no. hasn't said anything about time. Nope. <sighs> um, maybe it's because she left Iris, and it's stupid to leave her. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how to prove that, but like... I mean, this is the right statement. <laughs> okay. Maybe it's... Um... 
do we have Iris's testimony? It was then in her room till the murder. Oh, is that it? Yeah. Is it just like, guess what, idiots? Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Oh, well, 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 don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of the Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N no! She said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hasakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make a much better alibi. That's true. But that's odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm. She does indeed have honest eyes. Gah! All people lie. That is my belief. Well, you're- That's a lie! <laughs> Kidding. No. Well, but it's true. Everyone lies. Not Jesus. <laughs> okay, well, Jesus is not currently alive on this earth. So. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's in us. Yeah, I know. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Well, she's not going to whip the lady of the poor br back. I got whipped once for asking about how long she took a bath for. <laughs> True. <laughs> anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means, we must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, well, that isn't exactly what I... My memory's perfect, crystal clear, especially in the winter! I just sounded like an old lady there. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you'll need to show a m me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. Then please add your comments and boot Iris to your testimony. <laughs> and let us return to the cross-examination. Cool. That night I was helping an accolade for training, but I had my back like back. that. Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been in, at dinner. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You young man need to get your ex estimation of me up from the floor. Ugh. Iris always wears the same clothes. She only has one pair. <laughs> Why do we all wear these gloves? <laughs> <laughs> One of the best parts of the extremely good yeah. movie. <laughs> the smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. You're making a mistake. Thinking I made a mistake? An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder. There's no, no bath. bath. Okay, so That's this is the only said. thing that well, changed. Well, it's probably gonna be that one. <laughs> she was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. Well, what about her hood? We have her hood. <laughs> yeah, so that's different. Objection! Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course! That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. Objection! Hold it right there! What do you, why do you have that? That's the question of the day, now isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night, before the lights out bell was rung. Wh what You know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims, the defendant couldn't have been wearing this very hood. Well, well, well! <laughs> She's got two boxes. She's two That's boxes. one more than Cody needed. She's shorter than Cody is. <laughs> oh boy. Poor thing. <laughs> it's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he, <laughs> he does always, it. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. Order! Order in the court! Witness, you respond- ah! Sister. This hood. You have a spare- you have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well... I do tend to make too many of them. What does she make them like? 
<laughs> like, oh, I knit in my spare time and I just casually knit hoods. <laughs> That's we not all like... have a hobby. Yeah, but I don't think Our we... friend knits Dobby socks and Weasley sweaters. I forgot about that. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. I don't think that knitting hoods is very normal. Knitting a hat? Sure. Knitting... They don't need hats, though. Knitting gloves? Sure. She doesn't knit for other people. She knits for them. And they're just like, well... We need hoods. Seems really boring. Iris though. always gets ketchup on her. <laughs> How do you? <laughs> like, she gets a lot of ketchup. <laughs> she just like goes everywhere. Iris spaghetti for dinner. <laughs> they should take off their hoods when they eat. But, and get possessed by demons while they eat True. spaghetti. Well, and that makes that's me how you get possessed by demons. Because, you eat spaghetti. Like when you're wearing like a hijab, like do you? Would you be able to take it off? If, if, when you're, you're, in if you're in your own home. If you're in your own home, I know you can. But if it's like, oh, you're out and like somebody... But it's not like, oh, it's now it's the, now while we're at the mosque after saying the sacred prayer, we now eat the sacred spaghetti. It's like, no, <laughs> no, that's not how that works. <laughs> no, I, I apologize to any Muslims that I have offended no, there. <laughs> no, I think... Well, well yeah, every, everyone's got their own stories and things, too. Yeah. So... The, like I, there's I'd no, I don't one, think spaghetti's allowed. I'd at the seen mosque. this one story of like a girl who was like, "Yeah, I was on a roller coaster and my hijab fell off." And she was like, "I'm not gonna go and get it. I'm on a roller coaster." And she's <laughs> like, "Everyone thinks that it like you would freak out completely." She's like, "Someone caught it behind me. They gave it to me, and it was all fine." <laughs> and people were like, "Oh, I didn't know what you looked like about that." <laughs> I don't know. No. I see nah. a stockpile, a surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood. Well. So don't get spaghetti on it. <laughs> yup. This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. And this is quite strange. Wah! If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There's no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness! While I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. I I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on the way back to the inner temple. Those seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. They just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. My favorite kind. <laughs> Yeah, after my bath. Oh boy, I finished my bath around 11. Okay, thank you for finally telling us something. And I thought I should return to the inner temple. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and Iris was, oh, Mystic Elise, and with the sword of all things. Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. But here's the thing. If you push her out the window, it's not like you're going to be like, Wah-ha! And like, be able to jump out successfully and stab at the same time. There had to be two people doing this. Either there was like a... Either she's the klutziest person in existence and she and fell, fell out, out the window. window. She, she'd get bruised she too. Been, she could have been hanging out with Pearl. No, and she, Pearl accidentally pushed her out the window. She's just been playing a lot of Twilight Princess. And like, she jumped out the window and did the sword stab. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's turning into like Granny from Hoodwinked. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm more saying like Iris because she's down there. Like either they both had to come out the window, or one fell out and then there was a stabbing. <laughs> or Miss Elise was practicing to be an action star. <laughs> sure. Or it could be that there were two people. Like one yeah. person pushed, one person stabbed. I think that's <laughs> I more. I push, what you stab. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in two in court. And me seeing it all from this very chair. <laughs> er, well, something like that. This judge, his imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. Yeah. Because Gumshoe said, like, the exact same thing. <laughs> I would look at the fool- er, I would look the fool- Yeah. This is a really weird- I was like, I can't understand this sentence for two seconds. I would look the fool if I committed on such foolishness. Commented. Comment. Yeah. <laughs> Not committed. <laughs> committed on such fool- She's- she's jet lag, guys. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? <laughs> ho ho ho. 
It's fine. Well, we'll be cross-examining after my bath my favorite Dr. Seuss story next time on Core Marty <laughs> plays Phoenix Wright Trials oh and Tribulations okay. with, with Marty. Yeah. It's not, it's not just me. Yeah, I'm in there too. I do like half the work sometimes. Or not like, editing. Maybe like a fourth of the work because I voice stuff, but I don't even play. <laughs> I'm not yeah. the one moving the mouse. <laughs> okay, she be like, so where do you think the contradiction is? Yeah, and they'll be like, um... Five minutes later. All right, well, this is the one. Yep. <laughs> Anyhow, thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.